Okay, uh, let's get start. Hello everyone, I'm Yikun Ban. Welcome to our tutorial, Neural Contextual Bandits for Personalized Recommendation. Today I will be the presenter for the tutorial. This tutorial is a joint work with Mr. Inner Chi and Professor Jin For today's presentation, we will have 20 minutes break in the middle and have roughly 20 minutes Q setting at the end of this tutorial. Let's get started. First, let's consider the linear scenario of a human. To learn a skill, human you will start with the very limited data. Then by interacting with the teacher or environment, human can incrementally improve their skills and knowledge based on the feedbacks in the end, they could have very good outcomes. However, in the conventional machine learning regime, the interactions are mainly involved in the beginning and uh, or any phase. For example, to pre-process the data or interpret the results. This is not consistent with the human learning. Therefore, interactive machine learning has emerged where it focuses on the interactions in the learning process such that the machine learning model can incrementally improve itself based on the feedbacks. This learning regime is more consistent with the human learning. Therefore, interactive machine learning is the one of core of the artificial intelligence, and it has wide applications such as recommender systems, robot learning, uh, language models, and so on. Many inactive machine learning scenarios can be effectively formulated as a sequential decision-making process, where each interaction represents a round of decision-making. Here, we use the framework of the multi arm bandits to formulate uh, this scenario. In a round, the linear is presented with the key actions or arms um, or atoms, and then the linear is required to select uh, one arm according to some policy. After putting this arm, uh, the learner can observe the corresponding reward by interacting with the expert or environment. So with this feedback uh, or reward, the learning or models can improve itself based on these uh, feedbacks. Many recommendation scenarios can be considered as a sequential recommendation, where each recommendation action is taken sequentially and inactively. Thus, the sequential recommendation can be naturally formulated as a process of the sequential decision-making. For example, let's consider a recommendation scenario. A client is going to place an online grocery delivery order on an e-commerce platform. On this app, the platform is required to advertise the one grocery on the main page. So therefore, the goal needs to um, select uh, one grocery store that can maximize the possibility of placing this order uh, or like uh, satisfying the client. Here we formulate uh, each grocery store as an arm and uh, our goal is to uh, make the best recommendation and to let the client place this order. So after this advertisement, and we can observe the reward, like if the client will place the order or not, or click this grocery store or not. So with this reward, we can improve our recommendation policy based on these feedbacks. So the goal of the sequential decision-making or sequential recommendation is to maximize the expected accumulated reward. In other words, we want to select the arm with the maximal expected reward. Alternatively, we aim to minimize the accumulative regret, uh, which is the expected difference between the maximal reward and the received reward. However, the dilemma of the exploitation and exploration is ubiquitous in human decision making. For example, today, Will you go to the restaurant you used to go, or will you explore some new restaurants? Here we can foresee that if we choose a familiar restaurant, uh, we won't have very 
bad experience. Instead, if we want to try a new restaurant, we may discover more delicious food, or we may have some bad dining experience. So this is the dilemma of the exploitation and the exploration. But as we can observe, no matter uh, which restaurant, uh, no matter is the restaurant good or not, it will be a broad this uh, restaurant. We can uh, ob we can obtain the new knowledge. Uh, so therefore, this is the importance of the exploration. Accordingly, we have to pay the price for this uh, exploration. Or in a more complicated scenario, a uh, manor is digging the diamond. Uh, should the, the manor keep digging in the area where the co-worker has already found the diamond? Or should the um, manor explore some new areas where it may have the bigger diamond? Now let's see the uh, dilemma of exploitation and exploration in the sequential decision making. Let's consider the scenario of the conditional recognition using ChatGPT. Um, the agent is asking a question to the ChatGPT, like, uh, can you tell me a joke? ChatGPT answer that is sure, but uh, behind this, this is the dilemma of the exploitation and exploration. ChatGPT could pick some classic jokes that won't have bad outcomes, or ChatGPT could uh, recommend some new jokes that may have some surprising, surprising feedback. Therefore, how to pick these jokes will be the dilemma of the exploitation and the exploration. Now let's think about uh, why shall we uh, choose the bandit-based uh, method for the sequential recommendation. First, existing supervised uh, based collaborative filtering method highly rely on the trained data set. Therefore, they usually uh, require the very large collected data set. Instead, a uh, bandit based method can work uh, in the code start environment to like uh, to incre incrementally improve itself based on these uh, interactions and feedbacks. Uh, second, the ideal the ideal recommendation system should uh, adapt uh, or adapt over time to the user's interests. For example, on some short video platform the video content and the user's interest uh, may, may change or vary dramatically. Uh, third, bandit-based approach per, uh, provides the pretty simple the methodology for the exploration to tackle the exploitation and the exploration dilemma. This is the roadmap of this tutorial. Uh, in the following session, I will talk about the linear and the neural bandits, but uh, we will focus on the neural container bandit, which is uh, uh, a rel relatively new topic in recent years. There are uh, many two parts in this session. The first one is the fundamental exploration, uh, where we will discuss the algorithm and the series and some empirical evaluations of this classic uh, exploration strategy. And the second part, we will discuss some efficient exploration designed to, um, to follow quick response and uh, the efficiency. First, let's review the existing popular exploration strategies. The first one is the uh, epsilon gradient. With the probability one minus epsilon, uh, the linear could gradually uh, choose one arm according to the history or the linear could choose an arm randomly. Here, we can consider the greedy choice as the exploitation, like the cho choose the uh, classic jokes. Um, on the other side, we can consider the random choice as the exploration, where we will recommend some um, new jokes. The second exploration strategy is the uh, upper composite mount. It is, uh, and this is exploration strategy is highly depending on the confidence interval for each admitted reward of R. Here, the confidence interval is to measure the uncertainty of each action or each arm or atoms. Then the, in this strategy, they will choose the one with the maximum upper confidence bound. As shown in this figure, 
uh, we can consider the estimated reward plus the confidence bound um, as the upper confidence bound. First, so let's consider the classic uh, problem setting of the linear computer bandits. Let's go through the problem setting first. In a run, a, a user is serving and uh, the linear is presented uh, with uh, k atoms or arms. And uh, each atom is represented by a d-dimensional feature vector. And uh, then to learn the a uh, mapping function from the arm um, context vector to the reward. Here we use um, an, an unknown d dimensional preference vector theta to learn the preference of users. Because in this setting, we can consider that uh, each arm um, context may incorporate both context information from the atom set or the user set. Therefore, we um, ambitiously to use uh, one user preference vector theta to learn the, all the preference of the users. Then the reward function it is, is governed by a linear reward function. As we can see, it is governed by the other product of the user preference vector theta and the arm context vector x. Plus with the um, a noise eta, which is drawn from the some Gaussian distribution. Now let's uh, talk about another problem setting, disjoint problem setting. Uh, because in many recommended scenarios, the user feature like uh, uh, may not be available. So therefore we want to capture the personal preference. Uh, in this uh, problem, therefore, we use uh, a user preference vector theta to represent uh, each user preference uh, prospectively. Suppose there are n users, then we will have uh, an unknown preference vector accordingly for each user. Then the reward is governed by the uh, linear reward function, but the difference is that uh, um, this reward is strongly associated with the surfing user. Here, because we use the theta j uh, to represent the preference of the user j, and uh, this reward is calculated by the dot product of these two vectors plus some noise. Uh, next, let's go through one classic algorithm, linear UCB. Uh, this algorithm, as we mentioned before, this algorithm is uh, highly relied on the confidence uh, interval of this uh, algorithm. Uh, for example, give me an arm, we will build, we will, uh, we will build a common interval for this arm. We can consider each arm as an atom, and uh, we want to, as we first so we need to estimate it, uh, its reward, and then we want to me uh, measure its potential. So in this common interval, the first term will be the estimated reward, and the second one is the optimal reward. So then in this algorithm, they select the select the arm or select the atom based on the upper component bound, which is the sum of the estimated reward plus with the confidence bound, which is represented by this term. Then as shown in this figure, the workflow of this algorithm is as follows. Um, suppose there are totally T rounds, and uh, the, for each, in each round, we first need to, a user is serving, and we need to calculate the estimated uh, user preference, preference vector, theta T, which is uh, estimated based on the standard uh, rigid regression. Then we observe k arms or atoms, uh, which is uh, represented by the um, unknown factor x. Then for each atom or each arm, we will calculate its upper component bound, which is the sum of the two terms. The first term is estimated reward. Um, we can consider it as the exploitation. And the second term will be the confidence bound, um, which we can consider it as uh, uh, exploration. 
Then after calculating the uh, after counted bound of each arm or each item, we will choose the action or item with the maximal upper count bound. After putting this arm or after making rec this recommendation, like recommend this arm to the user, then we will observe the reward. So based on this reward, we can update the um, parameters based on the standard read regression as shown in this uh, figure. So this is the whole workflow of this algorithm. Now let's uh, take a look at the regret, regret analysis of this uh, algorithm. The first, as we mentioned before, this algorithm is high rely on the common interval. Now with this uh, interval, we can um, bound the regret of each round. For example, this is the regret of one round, then it can be decomposed uh, into two terms. The first term uh, can be bounded by the common interval, and the second term can be also bounded by the common interval. The first term is the error uh, produced by the selected arm, and the second term will be the error will um, produce a better difference between the selected, uh, between the eight better reward of the selected arm and the eight better reward of the optimal arm. So by bounding this term, we will obtain a regret upper bound, uh, which depends on the three key terms. The first term will be the number of rounds, so the capital T. So this regret upper bound shows that uh, the regret will grow semi-linearly with respect to the number of rounds. The second term will be the dimensionality of the item content vector. So it indicates that if the feature, the dimension, uh, dimensionality of the ARM feature increase, the difficulty of this uh, uh, algorithm or of this problem will also increase. And uh, the third term will uh, is that uh, the regret our bound is related to the number of arms. So because if we have a uh, more choice, so it, it means that we will have uh, uh, more difficulty to choose the best arm or the best term. Now let's uh, move to the, um, the tutorial's main focus, uh, neural bandits. So in this uh, problem setting, uh, similarly in a round, a user is serving and the uh, and the, for the linear, it is uh, represented, uh, the linear is rep represented with uh, key arms or atoms, where we consider each arm as a grocery store retailer of the atoms. Um, the key difference is that uh, instead of using the d-dimensional feature vector to represent or to lend the user preference, here we use, uh, uh, we use an unknown function H to represent the mapping from the item context and the reward. Here, the, we don't have uh, an assumption uh, on this uh, general reward function H, except that the reward function H is a bounded function. So therefore, as we can see, the in the neural bandits, the reward is uh, governed by the general reward function H plus with some more some Gaussian noise uh, uh, eta. Before introducing the neural bandits, uh, uh, here we need to discuss the concept of the neural tunnel kernel. This concept uh, is, uh, per, is introduced uh, in the 2018. It mainly introduced like uh, two ideas or two main concepts. Uh, the first uh, concept is that uh, when the neural network is uh, wide enough, um, it will behave like uh, the linear function or the linear model with respect to the derivative of the neural network with respect to its uh, parameters, like a gradient. So the intuition behind this observation is that uh, given the data set, that is not uh, linearly separable, so we can transform these uh, data points to the another higher dimensionality space. So in this uh, space, we can um, 
find a hyper plan that can separate these two clouds of the data sets. So we can consider the gradient of, a, of an ARM contest as a mapping function. So in this uh, new in the space spanned by the gradient or the neural tangent kernel, we can uh, find a linear function with uh, in this space such that we can linear separate these two classes. For the neural tangent kernel, the kernel function will be the uh, will be the dot product of the any two arm contact the gradient of any two arms. The second main Concept introduced by the neural tangent kernel is that so when the new network is well enough, the uh, the prediction of the new network will be like the kernel predictor, uh, with the neural tangent kernel. So in this way, we can analyze the convergence of the neural network uh, using the gradient descent by the uh, kernel predictor, like uh. uh with the neural tangent kernel or the neural tangent kernel regression. So now let's formally introduce the uh, neural UCB. Uh, let's say it's the, uh, one of the classic Arizona neural bandits. So to learn the general reward function, here we propose, uh, here we use the neural network to approximate this general reward function. Here the key difference, as we can see, this. Uh, Algorithm, they will select the arm with the uh, upper common bound of the neural network function. Here, the first term will be the output of the neural network function, and the second term will be the uh, will be the common interval built on the gradients. Compared to the linear UCB, as we can see, that the format is kind of very similar. Because they extended the neural CB to the space of the gradient on the neural tangent kernel space, where we can consider the gradient of an arm will be the new representation of an arm. Then this term, this term will be the um, will be the neural network of the well enough will be the output of the well enough neural network, which can which is uh, similar to the kernel regression on the gradient. And then this term, this confidence interval will be the uh, form we build down on the neural, build on down the RKHS space spanned by the neural tangent kernel. So this, uh, to, uh, so we can find the strong similarity between these two algorithm, but uh, the neural UCB is an algorithm running in the high dimensional space um, Spanned by the gradient. So this is the uh, workflow of the neural CP in each round. In each round, a user is serving and uh, the learner is presented with uh, uh, key arms. For each arm, we can consider each arm as an item. So for each item, we will calculate its upper count bound. That is the, the sum of the uh, neural network prediction and the confidence uh, interval uh, built based on the gradient of the neural networks. Then we choose the arm with the uh, with the maximal upper count bound. So after putting this arm and uh, observing the reward, uh, they, we can. Uh, estimated the parameters, like the important semantic parameters based on the rigid regression. But this rigid regression is calculated based on the, in the space of the neural tangent kernel. So after that, we can train our neural networks based on standard gradient descent, uh, like this line. Here we will briefly discuss the, this term gamma. That is to measure the, uh, that can take two terms. The first term, as we can see, it is a measure the confidence radius of the common interval built on the gradient. And the second term is uh, neural network function approximation error. It is a measure the uh, difference between the neural network uh, prediction and uh, the neural tangent neural kernel regression. Next, uh, that's uh, uh, move to the required analysis of the neural CB. 
On the left side, this is the definition of the neural talent kernel matrix. It is uh, to it is to describe the, the dynamics of the neural talent kernel because uh, when the network is wide enough, the neural talent kernel will be the deterministic, like uh, directly calculated by this uh, NTK matrix. And to finish this analysis, and uh, they had had a strong assumption on the uh, NTK matrix. It requires that this matrix is full rank or it is invertible. This assumption can be satisfied if there are no two observed arm contacts are parallel. So when this assumption is satisfied, the new network function and the new network function is very now, we can uh, represent the general reward function H by a linear reward function with respect, with respect to the gradient. Therefore, we can conduct the standard ridge regression on the space spanned by the neural tangent curve. Here, this is the upper bound of the optimal parameters of the optimal parameters. So with this assumption and the basic concepts, um, the neural UCB provides uh, a regret upper bound. As we can see, this term, uh, this is regret upper bound, it can uh, grow some linear with back to the capital T, which is the number of rounds. And it uh, contains another two complexity terms. The first term will be the effect dimension detailed, which measure the, the underlying dimensionality in the ArcHS space spanned by the neural talent kernel. And the second term will be the upper common bound of the neural parameter, optimal neural parameters. So as we can see, this rubric upper bound uh, match the complexity of the um, uh, match the complexity of the rubric upper bound in the linear UCB. But uh, we replace the dimension input dimensionality by the Effective dimension, effective dimension, which is a dimension effective, which is measure the dimensionality, underlying dimensionality in the space of the span by the NTK. So empirically, neural CB uh, works well. It uses the new network uh, uh, to estimate the reward for the exploitation, and it uh, uses the gradient for the exploration. And it uh, kind of achieves the sublinear regular upper bound similar to the linear CP. In the end, the neural CP generally outperform the linear container bandits because uh, in the real world, the reward function may be very complicated. Simply using the um, linear container bandit may not uh, be able to satisfy the reward assumption. Therefore, the neural container bandits usually outperform the linear container bandits because it can learn the more general reward function. Now let's uh, review the, the third exploring strategy, Thompson sampling. In this strategy, it formulates uh, each arm as a um, distribution, where the mean is the estimated reward and the variance uh, usually measure the uncertainty of this uh, decision, like, uh, like the reward estimation. So for each arm with the distribution, we will draw sample reward from each distribution. And then this, in this strategy, it will select the arm or atom with the maximal sample reward. Now let's uh, go through one of the classic algorithms linear Thompson sampling. Here, this is the prior assumption regarding the reward distribution. It is, uh, we assume it is uh, either uh, comply with the uh, Gaussian distribution, where the mean will be the expected reward. And the uh, ATA contains some um, noise that is uh, consistent with the variance of this uh, uh, distribution. And here we need to estimate uh, these uh, uh, two key terms. One of them is uh, a better reward, another one is a variance in this uh, normal distribution. So in this, as shown in this red figure, this is the workflow of the new, uh, linear time sampling. In each round, 
uh, user is serving, and we view all the like uh, key arms and uh, items. The first step we need to do is like uh, draw sample automated uh, user preference vector from the build uh, build normal distribution, where the mean is the automated user preference vector, uh, which is calculated based on the standard real regression. And uh, this uh, variance is calculated based the uh, confidence uh, interval built on this uh, um, uh, linear reward estimation. Then it will choose the arm with the maximal sample uh, uh, embedded uh, reward. After picking this arm, we can observe the reward. And based on this uh, observed reward, we can calculate the, we can uh, re-estimate the, the, our K parameters like the uh, B and F, which will be used uh, for the estimation of the user preference uh, parameter for the next round. So in this algorithm, we can consider the the variance of this uh, normal um the variance of this uh, normal distribution plays a similar role with the confidence interval because both of them are marrying the uncertainty of this uh, estimation of the reward. Now let's move to the uh, algorithm neural content sampling. The assumption and the problem setting, a uh, problem setting, is very similar. But uh, the re as mentioned before, the reward the reward function will be the extension of the linear reward function. And uh, in this problem, we are learning a general reward function h. So instead of using the linear estimator, here we use the neural network function to approximate the expected reward of the of an arm or of an atom. So as we can see, this is the estimated distribution where the mean will be the prediction of the new network and the variance will be a confidence interval built based on the gradient of these new networks. Then the procedure of the linear time sampling will be very similar to the uh, neural time sampling. Um, in, in a round, a user is serving and uh, the linear is uh, presented with the uh, key items. And each item has a contact vector. And uh, here we will for each uh, atom or each arm, we will calculate the estimated variance first, which will be used for exploration. And as we can see, we will sample a reward from the normal distribution built for each arm or the each atom, where the mean will be the prediction of the new networks and the variance will be the uh, calculated confidence interval um, based on the gradient of this new network. Then we choose the arm or we put the arm with the maximal estimated re reward, which is sampled based on the uh, normal distribution. So after this uh, uh, decision, we will receive the uh, reward and we can observe the reward accordingly. Then we can uh, update our networks, our new network, uh, new networks and some important parameters accordingly. So compared to a new world UCB, uh, they share very strong similarities. As we can see, they can just you know, uh, neural sampling transform the neural CP into a normal distribution, where the mean will be the prediction of the new network, and uh, the variance will be the common interval used in the neural CP. So they share like a similar idea, but uh, the neural time sampling will incorporate uh, more exploration because they formulate uh, uh, this uh, because they will sample the reward from a normal distribution, it uh, contains more uncertainties. Uh, so, in the empirical evaluation, uh, neural time sampling and neural UCB have the similar preference, preference and on some data sites, uh, neural time sampling. Outperform the neural CB. 
Here we have two observations. The neural tone sampling is more robust than the neural CB, and uh, it shows the robustness for the acceleration. The key idea, the key intuition behind this observation is that uh, for the neural tone sampling, we will formulate uh, uh, each arm as a normal distribution, and we draw the a reward from this sample reward from this normal distribution. So in other words, we will have very high probability uh, choosing the area around the mean, around the estimated reward. However, in the neural CB, we will always choose the arm with the maximum CB. That is the uh, uh, maximum potential it can have for this arm. Therefore, in this, uh, so in, therefore this, uh, in the, in the UCB based method, the exploration is more aggressive. So in the Thompson sampling based exploration, the um, its strategy is more conservative. Therefore, it is shows the more robustness in the exploration. Now let's move to the uh, the third algorithm uh, in that as we um mentioned before or as we have discussed before usb based and the thompson based uh, exploration strategy highly rely on the large deviation based statistical common interval however the ideal scenario for this common interval is that uh, the a better reward is symmetrically distributed in this common interval for example we have a 50 percent probability um where the effective reward is located in this uh, upper region. And another 50% probability that uh, says the uh, effective reward is located in the lower region. Um, however, in practice, uh, the common inter interval we require may be asymmetric because uh, the effective reward may be asymmetrically located in the common interval. For example, with the 80% probability, uh, the over the a better reward may be located in the upper region, and another twenty percent probability the reward will be located in the lower part region. Uh, so therefore, one of uh, the goal of this algorithm is to overcome the challenge uh, brought by the statistical confidence interval. So here, let's first consider a question: Where shall we make the exploration? Because we cannot make uh, accurate prediction on a subset of data, or for each decision making, it contains the uncertainties. So the goal of the exploration is to fill the gap between the effective reward and the estimated reward. Here, uh, this work defines two types of the explorations. The first exploration is the upper exploration. It should describe the a scenario when the model underestimated the better work. In other words, in this case, we want to do the upward exploration. In other words, we, we want to add uh, another value to the estimated reward to minimize the gap between the better work and the estimated reward. So another type of the exploration. Um, it is to describe the case uh, when the model overestimated the a better reward. Uh, as we can see, we want to do the downward exploration. In other words, we want to um, minus the value from this estimated uh, reward and to um, decrease or the minimize the gap between the a better reward and the estimated reward. However, adapting to these two type of exploration is challenging because uh, with different models and the different uh, data sets, the proportion of these uh, two types of exploration will be different. So how to automatically adapt to these two types of exploration will be challenging. So some of the challenge, uh, they propose a, um, a solution named the ANET. They propose to use uh, another new network to link the gap between the better reward and estimated reward, uh, named the potential gap, to incorporate the acquisition direction. 
the first component is the active optician neural network that is to estimate the real world based on the ARM context using the observer world to train this neural network. Another component of this algorithm is uh, exploration in your network. Uh, that is to estimate the potential gain. First, uh, giving an arm is an estimation by the first uh, by the exploitation network. The expected potential gain is defined as the difference between the expected reward and the estimated reward. Accordingly, the potential gain is defined as the uh, difference between the estimated reward and uh, the received reward. Know that potential gain has a very good proper property. It can indicate the foreign direction. For example, when the potential gain is positive, it shows that uh, we, need a, we need to make an upward exploration. Uh, when the potential gain is negative, it shows that we need to do the uh, downward exploration. Therefore, uh, they use the label, they use the potential gain as the label to train the exploration network to incorporate, uh, to learn the potential gain, which will incorporate uh, the exploration direction. And uh, what's the input of the exploration network? Here they use the gradient of the exploration network. Uh, with respect to the parameters. Based on the three reasons, the first one is that the gradient of the exploitation network incorporates the feature of the ARM context or the atom context. And it also incorporates the information of the discriminative ability of the exploitation network. The second reason is that uh, this idea is, by, is inspired by the theoretical required upper bound. This regret upper bound, uh, this confident interval can be considered as a function with respect to the gradient. Therefore, instead, instead of calculating the, this statistical confidence interval, they use the neural network to learn this confidence interval. And the third, um, they want to use the parameter of the acquisition network to uh, incorporate all the empirical information um, uh, you know, uh, brought by the exploitation neural network. Uh, this is the uh, whole structure of the neural network. It uh, consists of two neural networks. The first one is the exploitation network, that is to estimate the reward. And the second network is the exploration network, which highly depends on the first neural network. It is to estimate the, the potential gain. So, then they make a decision based on these two uh, new networks for the exploitation and exploration, respectively. Uh, note that, uh, as we can see, for epsilon gradient, um, it will just uh, make the random choice in the exploration, so it cannot adapt to the both types of exploration. For the neural CB, it will always add a value to the estimated reward, so it only works for the Upward exploration. For neural Thompson sampling, um, because it's formulated uh, each arm as a normal distribution, and uh, so therefore it has equal probability to do the upward exploration and the downward exploration. So therefore it cannot adapt to the different data set or different models. For inet, because it used the potential gain as a label to train a new network. It has the ability to learn the information and to predict the whether uh, this type of exploration is upward or downward. So the key difference is that uh, instead of calculating a statistical confidence interval, it uh, uses a new network to learn the confidence interval for the exploration. Uh, this is the workflow of the ANET in a round. Um, the linear is presented with the key arms or atoms. 
and for each arm, um, it calculated the exploitation and exploration score respectively, and then pick the arm with the maximal sum of the exploitation and the exploration score. After this uh, decision making or they putting this arm, they will receive the reward as such that they can estimate it or update, update the new exploitation and exploration network accordingly. Now let's uh, uh, take a look at the theoretical analysis of the ENet. Uh, the workflow is uh, very different from the approval workflow in the neural CB and neural Thompson sampling. In neural UCB and neural Thompson sampling, they bound the regret based on the two intermediate, uh, uh, intermediate uh, like uh, results. The first results they want to find the difference between the gradient descent in bandits problem setting and the, the gradient descent on the real regression, and then find the error um, produce a better difference between the real regression and the NTK regression, and the sec the third step they will find the error produce a better difference between the NTK regression and the expected uh, reward. In contrast. Uh, the ENET will only have intermediate one intermediate results to find the regret of one round. They will transform the gradient descent in bandits problem to the gradient descent in online learning. And they directly bound the difference between the uh, online gradient descent and the expected world, such that uh, the workflow of a uh, um approval workflow of the ENET is simpler than the above or existing works. The first lemma they provided is the average error bound of the exploration neural network. It contains the three terms. The first term uh, will be the infimum of the regression error caused by the function, some function class B. Uh, this uh, function class is controlled by the radius R and the, and the second term is the price of the picking this function class um, B with the radius R. As we can see, if we use the weather function class, and the price will be here. So it, it shows that a trade-off between the pick the function class, uh, like the approximation ability of the neural function class and uh, the price of picking this uh, neural function class. And the third term will be the common bound uh, for the prediction of this uh, exploration neural network. So with this uh, uh, lemma, they provide a regret upper bound of the ENet. Uh, they have this regret analysis is based on the ID assumption, but they show a, a tighter regret upper bound. First, it has a better interval, uh, interval probability because it depends on the passing error, regression error of the neural function class instead of neural talent kernel. Uh, second, a, uh, in this, uh, this regret analysis allows the arm context to be repeatedly observed. And third, it uh, have a, it improve the regret error bound by a, multiplicative factor log t. In the empirical evaluation, uh, they evaluate on the for the public data set, they achieve the good improvements over the neural CB and neural Thompson sampling. Uh, this uh, improvement uh, purely come from the, um, the difference of the exploration strategy. So it shows that uh, the uh, ENIT uh, may have the advantage over the acquisition perspective. Now let's move to the second part of this uh, session. That is, uh, it is the efficient uh, acquisition. Uh, as we discussed before, as we can see in the previous three uh, acquisition strategy, they all 
rely on the gradient. They need to calculate the gradient of the neural network um, when do the inference. So in the in some online or the recommendation setting, uh, we require the very quick and efficient uh, uh, response. Therefore, we want to improve the efficiency of this algorithm strategy. So the first algorithm is the neural linear ZB. It is uh, the idea is very simple. Um, it is very similar to the linear UCB. So the key difference is that they build a embedding of the representation for each arm for colony. So instead of using the UCB strategy on the arm contact vector, they use the UCB strategy on the embedding of each arm contact vector. So as you can see here, this is the embedding of each arm. Uh, in the original linear CD, we will directly use the arm context vector. But here we will use the embedding uh, that is uh, built by uh, some neural networks. And then we calculate the component interval based on this uh, new embedding. And in the linear UCB, it is directly built on the uh, arm context vector. So similarly, they updated the parameters based on this uh, um, arm embeddings, and uh, after the automation of the uh, user parameter preference theta, they train this uh, uh, new network embedding based on these feedbacks using this loss function. As we can see here, the theta is automated by the uh, rigid regression on the uh, in the space of the in the embedding space. So they can start this as a, a prior knowledge or the fixed value. So they can update the parameter W, that is the parameter of the neural network, based on the back propagation of this loss. So they can train this uh, uh, new network of coordinate to learn a new embedding for each other. The second efficient uh, exploring strategy is uh, neural bandits with the perturbed reward. Uh, it is uh, um, it is an implicit exploring strategy. Um, as we can see, in a round, uh, the linear is presented with uh, key atom or arms. So they will choose arms um, purely based on this new network I. But the uh, the training of the S F is kind of different. Here they draw noisy from some normal distribution, where the variance is uh, calculated based on the content interval. Then they will add this noisy to the observe the reward. So 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 therefore instead of, instead of training this training this network based on the observe the reward or the receive reward, they will train this new network based on the perturbed reward. Because they think that uh, the perturbed reward contains the potential of each arm. So they will use this, uh, um, use the back propagation to propagate this potential through all the neural networks. So therefore they believe that uh, the trained neural network will incorporate uh, both exploitation and uh, exploration. However, as we can see, this algorithm is efficient and uh, use the uh, implicit uh, exploration. This algorithm is kind of uh, unstable because uh, um, we don't know how will the particular world affect the neural structure or the parameters in this neural network. Especially, um, from now, uh, more and more new networks, uh, new networks become more and more complicated. So it is purely like a black box. So we don't know how will the uh, perturbed world uh, influence the insect. Uh, therefore, with different models, the exploring effort will be different. So it so this strategy may be a little bit uh, unstable in some special case. Uh, now let's uh, move to the third uh, exploring strategy, uh, inverse gap strategy. 
this exploration strategy will be a little bit uh, um, different previously. It is also very efficient because it is purely dependent on the one neural network without requiring the gradient. Uh, let's why here they use the y represent the loss. Loss can be considered as a residual of the reward. So therefore, you want to choose the arm with a maximal reward, which is equal to choosing the arm with a minimal loss. So here there are two steps. The first step we want to find the arm with a maximal reward, that is the B or the minimal loss. Then they will calculate the probability of uh, for each arm. Here they use the, this strategy, the inverse gap strategy. The intuition behind it is that if the gap between the of this uh, between the maximal estimated estimated reward around all the arms and the estimated reward of this arm. So if its difference is uh, uh, if this difference is very small and the probability of selecting this arm will increase. Because it uh, considers that when there are two arms very close to each other, it's better they are very close to the maximal estimated reward. We think consider in this decision making, it contains more uncertainties. So we have less certainty to the uh, selection to the estimation of our uh, model. So therefore, they will increase the probability that is around the maximal estimated reward. In contrast, when this difference between the estimated reward and the maximal estimated reward is large, uh, they will dec decrease the probability of selecting this arm because they believe that this arm is far away from the from their desired arm because the estimation is far away from the uh, maximal estimated reward. So therefore they will decrease this probability. So using this strategy, they form a distribution over all the arms. Or, or arm, um, so then they will sample the uh, arm based on this distribution. So they will pull this arm uh, they will pull the sample up and observe the reward accordingly. So after observing the reward, they will update this uh, neural network coordinate. So as we can see in this algorithm, they don't require the gradient and they calculate the, the uh, probability distribution of all the arms based on the difference between the maximal estimated reward and the estimated reward of each arm. But um, there is a one advantage, this advantage of this algorithm is that uh, the this mechanism of this exploration is kind of simple because uh, it is kind of intuitive. It doesn't have the uh, theoretical tool to measure the uncertainty of each estimated reward of arm. And they, in other words, they don't have the uncertainty measurement for the exploration. So therefore, sometimes it will be difficult to explain this exploration action. And for some more important uh, uh, application scenarios, um, it may, you know, work purely intuitively or the empirically. So therefore we can consider like add some um, uncertainty measurement to this algorithm to increase its uh, explanation ability. Uh, this algorithm has, has very nice theoretical properties. So the for the previous three works, for the neural CB and the neural tone sampling, their required upper bound is highly depending on the effective, effective dimension d tau, where d tau are measure the underlying dimension in the space of the spanned by the neural kernel. So this value can be a very large value. 
So in the worst case, this this regret upper bound will go to T. So this means that this regret will go linearly in some cases. And for the regret bound of init, init, although their regret bound looks better, but they require the uh, ID assumption. Uh, this analysis is uh, in the version of the conference version. And this uh, new algorithm square, neural square CB, they provide the um, absolute regular upper bound, which has a complexity of the square of the KT. In other words, in, even in some, in, for any cases, the regret half bound will grow some linear with respect to number of rounds. It will be considered k as a prior knowledge or constant. So this algorithm first remove the dependency of the apex dimension and minimize the dependency of the uh, new tenant kernel. To sum up, in this uh, session, we will talk about three, six algorithms. The first three algorithms um, show the three principles of the strategy accordingly. The neural CB can be thought sort of as an extension of the NDK, neural, neural linear CB to the NDK space. And, and the time sampling, neural time sampling can be thought sort of as, sort of as an extension of the linear time sampling to the NDK space. And the inlet, uh, Proposed to use the non neural network to do the exploration. For the other three efficient algorithms, the neural linear CB is the linear CB with the neural uh, embedding, and uh, the perturbative world uh, is an algorithm with the implicit exploration. And uh, the last algorithm, neural square CB, is the exploration using the inverse gap strategy. So this is the end of this session, and we will have a 20 minutes break. And uh, in the next session, we will talk about uh, the clarity of bandits. Okay, let's have a break. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to back. Uh, let's start our second session, clarity of bandits. First, I will give some background and motivations regarding why shall we need the clarity of bandits for the recommendation and what's the major challenges to achieve this objective. To achieve the clarity of, um, recommendation, conven conventional approach such as uh, collaborative filtering or content-based filtering highly rely on the uh, several chain, um, achieve the good exercise, but there are some major challenges in for this method. First, they if, in some scenarios we may not uh, able to collect a very large data set. So how to work in the cold start problem? The second challenge is how to uh, rapidly how to adapt to the rapid change of the recommendation content and the user interest. For example, in some short platform. Um, short video platform, the video content and the user interest um, may change dramatically. And the third challenge is how to tackle the dilemma of the exploitation and the exploration. This is the classic uh, formulation of the online recommendation using contextual bandits. Uh, in one round, the lender is presented with uh, a set of atoms or apps, and uh, the lender needs to choose one app based on the collective information, such as the interactions of past users and atoms. Then recommend one atom or arm to the uh, target user. So with this recommendation, the user will give us some feedback, like uh, we will the user place the order or not, or uh, will the user uh, click the uh, recommendation or recommended item um, or not. So with this feedback or reward, the learner could update the recommendation policy. 
Uh, similarly, the main challenge is the dilemma of the exploitation exploration because in this scenario, uh, we not only need to ex exploit the atoms with the sufficient user interactions, like, like the atoms with high confidence by our model. We also need to explore these new atoms or these atoms with low confidence because we believe these atoms may have some potential in the future. So, um, so the mo main motivation of the collaborative, collaborative bandits is that the one user decision is usually affected by other users. Therefore, how to utilize the mutual influence and the user collaborative effects first to improve the recommendation quality, second, alleviate the interaction scarcity issue in terms of some individual users. Third, how to rap uh, rapidly adapt to these new users or atoms based on the interactions with other users. So there are main three, uh, three main challenges in the collective bandits. The first one is, is that how to formally model user collaborations. Uh, because the user correlations or the collaborations are the abstract concepts. So we need to mathematically formulate these uh, correlations and uh, uh, quantify these uh, uncertainties and the correlations. Um, from the existing works, one research line is that they use uh, uh, user clustering to represent uh, the user correlations. Another one is they use the uh, graph to represent the user correlation where the nodes are the users and the edge measures the uh, correlations among users. The second challenge is, is that how to discover the user correlations. Because the user correlations are unknown uh, typically, and they are unknown, uh, they, they have uh, unknown prior knowledge. So even in some cases, uh, the user correlation is uh, available, but they may not uh, capture the accurate uh, user correlations. Therefore, in this challenge, uh, existing words, they may use the user cluster users uh, based on the past uh, interactions to discover these correlations. The second research line is that uh, they build the exploitation and acquisition graph to uh, capture these user correlations. The third challenge will be that how to utilize the user correlation to improve the recommendation qualities. Um, one research line is uh, they use just the combination of the linear at at the, uh, linear estimations to improve the recommendation quality, but uh, um, the relationship between the user correlation and uh, the recommendation quality may not be linear. Therefore, some of existing words they use the gradient gradient based meta learning or the graph neural networks to. Uh, leverage this user, user correlation to improve the recommendation quality. Now let's uh, move to the first section, uh, online clustering of bandits. First, let's recall the two problem settings in the standard model bandits. The first one is the joint modeling setting. They use the one use one a deep dimensional preference vector to model all the users' preference. In other words, they learn one preference vector based on all the interactions. So in this setting, they ignore the user heterogeneity because uh, this problem setting is too ambitious to formulate all the user preference using one vector. You know, in practice, many users may have a very different or distinct preference. So in this problem setting, they may ignore the user heterogeneity. And the second problem setting is the disjoint modeling. Uh, for each user, they will maintain a user preference vector to learn the user preference. However, because each band is work independently, so they may ignore the user correlations in this problem setting. So online clustering of bandits is to strike a 
trade-off between the user heterogeneity and the user correlations. They have two objectives. The first one is identifying the user clusters in multi-arm bandits. And the second objective is to explore how to explore these user clusters to improve the recommendation. The first research line is the clustering of linear container bandits. Uh, this problem uh, studied based on the linear reward function, where the reward um, is covered by the linear, by the data product of the user preference vector and the um, context vectors plus some noise. And they use, they measure the user correlation strength or intensity based on the distance between two users individual preference vector. Uh, there are mainly two settings. The first one is that uh, they define user cluster um, as a set of users with the identical preference. Uh, this line of work uses uh, global clustering with the involving connected components. In other words, they, um, in this linear process, they will build a graph where the nodes are users and the, uh, the address uh, the edges will be created if they think two users are neighbors. And then they consider the compo connected components as the clusters. The second problem setting is the kind of more general uh, problem setting. They consider um, a cluster as a set of users with a similar um, preference, which allow a little bit of difference among the user preference. And this approach uses the seed-based local clustering, uh, which is more efficient. So in next, we will go to detail of this work. Uh, for the work, lock B, it, it is mainly to solve the following three challenges. The first one is uh, when to ensure the set of identified users is a true cluster. Because the clusters are unknown knowledge, so how to uh, detect the clusters with the similar expected reward. The second time is that can we further reduce the clustering complexity. Previous works have the clustering complexity with the complexity uh, big O-N, where N is number of users. But can we further reduce this complexity? And the third time is that uh, can we consider and address the Software clustering. Uh, in this case, this problem will consider the overlapping clusters because, in practice, a user is allowed to um, belong to multiple communities or clusters. So, to solve these challenges, they introduce the algorithm lock B. First, uh, they formally define uh, the gamma cluster, where the gamma cluster is a set of users uh, where their preference vector are allowed to have some difference. And the second objective is to how to leverage this user cluster to improve the quality of the recommendation. Um, evaluated by the regret, where the first term is the optimal expected reward, and the second term is the a better reward of the receipt or pulled out. This algorithm has two modules, the clustering module and the pulling module. First, let's uh, go through the clustering module. They use the seed-based clustering. So the first step, they will uh, randomly choose the key users as the key seeds. And then can say there are two users and neighbors if they if the distance of the two users are smaller than the context bound of the user specific bound uh, and the seed specific bound. So they so and the third step, they consider a set of uh, they consider the gamma cluster as the uh, the set of users that are including the seed user and all its potential neighbors that is satisfying this uh, criteria. Note that uh, the contents uh, bound for specific user 
is shrinking as the uh, more times uh, the serving uh, the user is serving. So therefore, as we can see, I described in figure, the potential neighbors of a user will change as well. So a natural question is how to uh, or when to stop the clustering and all of the uh, clusters. Here they introduce the termination criterion. So given the cluster, they uh, given the um, even see the user, they will stop clustering users when this criterion is satisfied that the confidence bound is smaller than a fixed value. Because in this case, they believe that they have enough confidence regarding the detected cluster. So they will open the cluster and think they are the ground truth clusters. The second module is the premium pooling module. Uh, they use the individual confidence bound and the cluster's specific confidence bound. Uh, these two bound is uh, are designed for the exploration. So they select the arm with the maximum sum of these two terms. The first term is the estimated reward using the information of the whole cluster. And the second term is the exploration using the information of this uh, cluster. Note that a user may belong to multiple overlapping clusters. Uh, therefore, so how to choose the one cluster among these candidate clusters? So the first step is to find the, all the candidate clusters for serving user and serving all arm. And then they will choose the cluster with the maximal confidence bound. In other words, they will choose arm with the maximal potential. For example, even the admitted reward of this group is larger than this cluster, they will choose this cluster because uh, they believe this cluster has uh, the maximal potential. Therefore, uh, they will choose the uh, candidate arm, candidate, uh, candidate group with the maximal potential. Now let's take a look at the theoretical results of this algorithm. First, they provide a theorem regarding the uh, correctness of the uh, this algorithm. In other words, like uh, they can with high probability, the set of user detected by this algorithm is a true cluster. The second theorem is regarding the efficiency of this algorithm. They can detect the cluster um, with the complexity with the, the number of rounds that has a complexity of of n times the log n of square root of n log n. And the third theorem is regarding the effectiveness that provide a regret upper bound that has the complexity of square root of t. Um, in other words, the regret, accumulated regret will grow some linearly with with respect to number of rounds. In Berkeley, uh, this low clustering algorithm can improve the performance perform, performance over the previous global clustering algorithm up to 10 percentage. Now let's talk about the uh, clustering of neural bandits. The three changes solved by the neural bandits is kind of similar. The first one is how to efficiently determine the user's relative group. Here we can see the key difference is the relative group. Is that uh, the given a given one arm or item, they define the cluster as a set of users with a similar preference on a specific item. Because in practice, uh, two users may have some similar preference on a subset of items, but they may also have some very different preference on other type of the items. So the relative group are introduced to formulate the such scenarios. And another key difference is the definition of the reward. In the clustering of the linear bandits, the reward function is uh, 
linear reward function. But uh, in the neural bandits, the reward function will be a general reward function denoted by H. So the second tangent is how to mathematically represent the dynamic cluster. This work uses the metalinear to represent the to dynamically represent the user cluster. And the third challenge is that how to balance between the exploitation and exploration. This work uses the uh, user based method to do the exploration. So this is the work we introduced uh, is the M, named MCMB, uh, which is uh, the full name is meta clustering of the neural bandits. First, let's see how to calculate the user clusters. Um, they define two users um, that uh, who belong to one cluster if their a better word are uh, same, uh, identical. So therefore, in this problem setting, uh, a, a cluster is defined as a set of users with uh, exactly the same identical better word. They, have, they also Im impose another assumption on this problem that uh, um, they assume that there is a gap between two user groups because in practice, they assume that the users from two different groups will have the different preference on a specific uh, So in this problem, they have two objectives. The first one will be identify the clusters, relative clusters, and the second objective will be how to leverage the relative cluster to improve the quality of the recognition. Here are the expected reward of the arm with respect to a specific user is defined as the general reward function H. To model the user preference, uh, MCMB has, uh, have, in this work, MCMB also have two modules. The first module is a clustering module. Uh, the, as the first step, they will like uh, assign each user a neural network, where each neural network is to learn the individual preference of this user. Um, conditional on a specific arm. And then they define two users, uh, potential neighbors, if they are the difference of the estimated reward or the prediction of the neural networks is smaller than a threshold. Therefore, a cluster is defined as the set of users, including the serving user and all its potential neighbors. That's uh, satisfying this criterion. So with these detected clusters, they use a metalinear to represent this dynamic group. They will, the idea is that given this detected group, they want to drag this metalinear toward the direction of these user clusters, such that the metalinear could uh, represent the preference of these user clusters. So in detail, uh, given a detected cluster, they will draw a few samples from the historical data of uh, um, this detected cluster, or the historical data of all users from these clusters. Then they will conduct the several step gradient, a static gradient descent, using these draw the samples. So in this way, they will drag this metalinear to the direction of the detector cluster to um, represent the preference of this user cluster. Um, for the exploration, they use the UCB-based exploration. They derive a new form of the confidence interval. This confidence interval contains uh, two key terms. The first term will be the uh, represent the information of the meta linear. And that is the gradient discrepancy between the user model and the meta model or the meta linear. The second term represents the information of the user set because this is the user set our confidence bound based on the 
service the frequency of a specific user. Therefore, they choose the, um, to maximize this our count amount. That is consisted of two terms. The first term is the estimated reward um, at the meta linear. This includes the information of a user cluster. And the second term will be the comment bound, which contains the both the meta set information and the user set information to do the exploration. Now let's go through the uh, theoretical analysis of this algorithm. The first, they provide a instance dependent regret upper bound. In this uh, derivation of this regret upper bound, they mainly overcome the three channels. The first channel is how to analyze the meta linear in the neural bandit framework. They build a common interval for the meta linear by bridging the user linear and the meta linear. The second challenge is that uh, how to reduce the naive regret bound square root nt to the square root of qt, where n is the number of users and q is the number of the clusters. In other words, q is much smaller than the number of users. Than n. So they reduce the regret bound to the uh, square root of qt. In other words, this regret upper bound only depends on the number of underlying clusters among users instead of the uh, number of users. The third challenge is that uh, they don't have the specific uh, assumption on the uh, NDK matrix. Neural bandits have the uh, assumption they require the NDK matrix to be the full rank. So therefore, in this analysis, they don't have the assumption and the, the arm contexts are allowed to be repeatedly observed. And then they provide the uh, upper bound for this complexity term, and their regular upper bound will recover the state of art of the neural bandits. And basically, MCMB outperforms the baselines. It actually outperforms this uh, clustering of linear computer bandits because they can learn the general reward function on the, and the cluster users based on the neural networks and the meta -lenders. Uh Now let's uh, do a, make a summary for the clustering linear bandits. Uh, they based on the linear reward function and they measure the correlation intensity based on the distance of the user preference vectors. And they use the combination of a linear estimator to do the reward estimation. In contrast, the neural clustering of neural bandits, they do the clustering based on, based on the general reward function. And they introduce a relative uh, cluster, that is uh, a set of users with a similar preference on a specific uh, Item of arms. Then use the gradient based meta linear to do the reward estimation and exploration. Uh, now let's move to the second topic graph bandit learning. Uh, this is uh, actually a follow up work after the meta clustering of the bandits because uh, the research land. Clustering of bandits only can formulate the coarse grain uh, user correlation. In other words, they define the cluster as a set of users with the identical or similar preference. So they will contribute equally or similarly to the serving user. But in practice, a user may have uh, like, uh, we want to formulate the fine grain the user correlation. In other words, each user can contribute very differently to the serving user. Therefore, this work introduced the uh, graph bandits, where each node, where each node is a user or a bandit, and the edge between any two users measure the correlation strength between these uh, two users. Therefore, in this setting, uh, each user can contribute differently to the final decision. In this work, they introduced uh, two graphs. 
exploitation and exploration graph. User exploitation graph is a graph uh, built based on expected reward that is to formulate the user correlations among these uh, uh, among the users. And the second graph is the exploration graph that is to measure the uncertainty of uh, two users regarding a specific arm. So the edge will measure the uh, correlation regarding the uncertainty of the exploration perspective for any two users. Now let's go to the go through the details of this uh, uh, algorithm. Uh, in a round, a uh, target user is uh, um, serving and uh, it will be presented with uh, um, K items or arms where each arm is represented by a d-dimensional feature vector. Then the reward is defined as the general reward function H. The key difference is that the, the input of the H will depend on the user correlation graph to model the user correlations, and will depend on the specific user and the specific arm uh, with some noise. So as we mentioned before, this user correlation graph is a abstract concept and is, it is uh, unknown knowledge. But the ground truth um, exploitation graph will be formulated in this way, where each user, where each node represents the exactly reward of a user, and uh, they construct the edge weight based on this criterion. If the effective reward of the two users are very similar or close to each other, and the correlation of these two users will be strong. In other words, if their effective reward regarding a specific arm is very different, then the correlation of the two users will be very weak. The second graph is the user exploration graph. That's it to uh, measure the correlation in terms of the potential gain of the users. To measure the uncertainty of a decision making, they use the potential gain to measure the uncertainty, which is the better reward minus the estimated reward. So in this graph, each node represents a user and they build the add weight using this criterion. So if the potential gain of these two users are very similar to each other, they will have the two users will have strong correlations in this graph in terms of the exploration. In other words, if the exploration, if the potential gain of the two users are very far away from each other, then the correlations in terms of this exploration will be very big for these two users. So overall, the objective of this problem is how is to minimize this uh, regret, where the first term will be a better reward, um, will be the best a better reward of all arms, uh, in uh, condition on a specific user. And this second term will be the receiver reward, uh, conditional, conditional, condition on a specific user and a specific arm, and the selected arm. This is the overall method of this uh, proposed algorithm, graph neural bandits, is mainly consider of four components. The first component is to estimate the exploitation and the exploration graph. Because as we mentioned before, uh, these two graphs are unknown knowledge, so we have to estimate the two graphs on the fly. And the second component will be the uh, reward of the potential gain estimation for the exploitation and exploration. And the third component, they choose the, how it like the criterion, how to choose these arms. And the first component is that they update these two graphs and the uh, parameter of these two neural models based on the feedbacks. The first step has estimated the uh, user exploitation graph. Here we assign each user uh, user exploitation network 
that is to ultimately the effective word of a specific order, which is trained based on the uh, received reward given the selected, uh, uh, given the input that is the arm feature vector. So let's construct uh, this graph by like uh, setting the edge weight using this criteria. Of the ultimate reward of two users are very similar to each other, then the correlation in edge weight of the two users will be strong. In contrast, if the difference of the ultimate reward of the two users are very uh, big, and then the correlation is in terms of the, um, in terms of the better world will be uh, very large. Uh, yeah, and the other weight will be very small in this graph. The second step is attribution of the uh, exploration graph. So they also assign a new network for each user to ultimately the potential gain. We are to train this exploration new network, the label will be the received, the observed potential gain. That is the difference between the received reward and the estimated uh, reward. So they build the, this graph by setting the edge weight using this uh, criteria. If the two users estimated the potential gain are very similar to each other, and then the edge weight in this graph will be very strong. In contrast, if there's the difference of this uh, estimated potential gain is uh, very big, and then the correlation edge weight on this graph will be very small. So with this uh, two estimated uh, user exploration graph and user exploration graph, you want to get the final estimated uh, reward. So given the estimated user exploration graph, here we want to obtain uh, um, arm representation that contains this graph information. Here we feed this, uh, uh, we, feed, we feed this arm to a fully connected layer for each user perspectively to learn uh, no embedding on this uh, user exploitation graph. Then with this uh, estimated graph, where each node has the uh, embedding, we can, aggregate, we can get an aggregation representation using the graph new network, which is the uh, HADD. Then we feed uh, this aggregated representation to another IFC new network. Uh, such that uh, the, we can get the final estimated reward that is for the exploitation. Uh, the second step uh, will be the um, potential gain estimation. With the exploration graph G2, we first feed the gradient of the, uh, the first GNI in terms of the arm to each fully connected layer of each users who get a representation uh, for each node on this user exploration graph. Then we can apply the graph neural network on this estimated user exploration graph. Then we will get a final aggregated uh, um, representation. Then we feed this aggregated representation to another LC layer you get the final estimated potential gain. So the third step will be the selection criterion uh, with this estimated reward and the potential gain. The DR is very simple. They just choose the arm with the maximum sum of the exploitation score that is calculated based on the graph neural network on the user exploitation graph. And the estimated potential gain of the exploration score that is calculated based on the graph neural network with the user exploration graph. After pulling this arm, and they will receive the reward. So based on this receive the reward, they can update the parameters of these two neural networks, two graph neural networks, and then 
they can update uh, these uh, two uh, user graphs accordingly. So now, now let's uh, take a look at uh, the theoretical analysis of this uh, GNB. So with the sufficient uh, sufficient uh, not enough network, uh, the regular upper bound is uh, satisfied uh, with the complexity of square root t uh, log n, where n is the number of users. Know that uh, they reduce the regular upper bound from the square root n t to the square root the t log n where n is the number of users. This is the big improvement from the complexity of the on to the complexity of the log n. Now let's take a look at the uh, experiment setting. In the experiments, uh, under the online recommended setting, we evaluated the proposed uh, GMB framework on the six row data set with the uh, different uh, um, specifications. They include the nine state of art uh, baselines as uh, including both the neural algorithm and the linear algorithms. In summary, the neural algorithm generally outperforms these uh, uh, linear bandits because the, they can learn the general of the function. And among these uh, neural bandits algorithm, GNB achieves the best performance because they can formulate and leverage these uh, fine grained user correlations. Uh, now let's uh, move to the uh, how to leverage the correlation among these apps. Uh, this is the classic formulation of the online recommendation. The key difference is that uh, where the uh, arm group information is available. So how to leverage this arm group information uh, to improve the recommendation quality. We are we can consider each arm as an item, and the arm group information will be the like the category of these items or the uh, atom types of these uh, atoms. So based on this uh, um, category or type information, we can easily form the arm groups. Such group information are usually easily accessible in practice. For example, on some uh, medium platform, uh, some music or movies can be grouped by the genres. And on some article recommendation, these articles can be grouped by the uh, literary styles. On some e-commerce e -commerce recommendation, for example, if the arms are the restaurants, they can be grouped by the cuisine types. This information are easily accessible in practice. Therefore, let's take a look at the detailed formulation of this uh, uh, problem. First, we assume the arm groups uh, information are available. Uh, suppose there are totally n uh, arm groups, and for each arm group, it uh, related to a distribution regarding uh, over all the arms or items uh, in this group. Then in each round, they will receive a user and a set, a set of arms and the arm uh, category arm group information. In other words, we know the arm group or the category information of each arm or each item. So the reward will be um, defined as a general function, defined as a general function H, where H depends on the affinity matrix and the arm context, where affinity matrix represents the arm group graph. So arm group graph is to model the correlation among each arm groups. For example, each node represents an arm group that is a, a category of, a, of the atom. So the edge width between these two arm group um, will represent the correlation of these uh, two arm um, categories. So this group actually is uh, unknown knowledge. The ground, ground truth graph will be like uh, the uh, unavailable and we need to estimate this uh, arm group graph on the fly. 
here let's see how to uh, estimate this arm group and leverage this arm group to improve the quality of the recommendation. As we mentioned before, uh, the attribute in this arm group actually is unknown. So the ground truth as weight will be the measured by this criteria. Uh, this idea, uh, this process is a little bit complicated, but the idea is simple. It's like uh, they measure the difference of the two distrib the distribution of these two arm group. If this uh, distribution are very close to each other, then the add weight on this uh, between these two nodes will be very large. But uh, if the difference between these two distributions is large, so the correlation will be weak. So the edge weight on this graph will be small as well. So with this estimated arm group graph, how to, the idea is a little similar to GME. That is to get an aggregated representation for each arm. Where uh, we first get another representation um, for each arm group using the fully connected layer. And then we apply G graph neural network to this estimated uh, arm group graph. Then we get a final aggregated representation, HGN. Then we feed this uh, aggregated representation to another F layer, we will get the uh, final estimated reward. Now let's see how to tackle the exploitation and exploration dilemma. They use the UCB based strategy. They build the um, they build the confidence uh, interval for this general reward function that includes the arm group graph and the arm context. Then they select the arm with the maximal uh, UCB that is the estimated reward by scrubbing networks and the confidence bound uh, design for the uh, up group graph. We also provide the uh, uh, regret upper bound for this uh, problem, for this algorithm. This uh, regret upper bound has the complexity of the square root of t, where t is the number of runs. It also depends on the effective, effective dimension d tau. This regret upper bound uh, uh, actually matches the state of the art results in neural bandits. <coughs> Then empirically, they evaluate uh, this, uh, their method on the four data sets compared to many neural uh, bounding algorithms. Uh, they achieve the best performance because they can leverage this uh, available ARM group information. There are two other settings of this uh, uh, a related topic. The first one is the band learning with the graph feedback. So in this problem, uh, the arms will form a graph and each round the linear is required to select the one arm and put this arm. So in addition to observing the reward of this selected arm, they will observe the reward of this subgraph. This subgraph includes the uh, selected, selected arm. And the second problem setting is the graph search with band -aids. In this problem, um, each arm will formulate uh, one graph, like each arm will represent a graph. Where this uh, uh, problem setting can be found in the like area of the biology or the medical, like we consider uh, each graph as a gene, genes graph or the proteins graph. Then the Goal is to select the best graph, like the best arm in the problem setting. But in this, but this uh, re, uh, related to topic doesn't leverage, uh, do not leverage the correlations among the users of the arm set. So we will just uh, briefly mention them. Uh, now let's move to the final section, that is for combo recommendation.
First, let's uh, uh, take a look at the motivated case. Assume there is an e-commerce e company is launching the promotion campaign, and they are promoting a combo of products like uh, the snacks, uh, berries, and tortoise. And they, the platform is required to select uh, each item from each uh, category and uh, uh, form a new combo and recommend this combo to the customer. So the goal is uh, to find the best combo uh, among all the possible combos. So with this recommended combo, the customer will give uh, uh, feedback regarding this uh, combo. Um, or the um, customer will give a specific feedback to the to some specific uh, uh, item or the products like the <coughs> snack, which we call sub reward. The sub rewards can be available or not. So mathematically, we formulate this uh, scenario as a multi-fatted bandit, where each category of the items will be a uh, uh, bandit. And uh, the goal is to select uh, one arm from each bandit. So suppose there are totally three bandits, and uh, we are able to, we need to select uh, three arms from three bandits respectively. And I recommend is this uh, three arms to the user. The user may give the final reward. Uh, it is required to give the final reward that is measure the overall feedback of this uh, combo. But uh, the user may also give the sub reward regarding a specific arm. Now let's take a look at the uh, formal definition of this problem. The first uh, definition will be the subword function definition. For each bandit, there is a reward function h uh, to formulate the reward of each bandit. And uh, the final reward function will be defined as the, uh, the mapping from the sub rewards. In other words, the final reward is related to the sub reward of each selected arm or item. Here we impose the, an assumption to this final reward. That is, the, we assume the final reward satisfies the Lipschitz continuity. In this problem, they also need to minimize regret, which is the um, difference between optimal final reward and the received final reward. In other words, we only care about the final reward in this uh, problem, but we want to leverage the, uh, sub the availability of the sub reward to improve the final reward. Here they design a sample new networks where they use a fully canon layer to learn the reward of each bandits respectively. Uh, so, so there are key bandits, so we totally will select key arms totally. We feed each arm to the fully, fully canon layer of each bandit, get an a individual separate representation. Then we use a shadow layer to learn the correlations among these Bandits to get the final estimated reward capital F. They use the UCB based uh, uh, method to tackle the exploitation and exploration dilemma. They build the content interval on this uh, assembled new network and they select the arm with the maximum UCB. That is the uh, estimated um, reward and the confidence bound built on this combo. So in this work, they build a new confidence bound for this sample new networks that I consider of the two key terms. The first term measures the error of the specific bandits, like the fastest specific new networks. And the second term is the 
uh, measure the error introduced by the sharding network, like uh, uh, measure the um, approximation error of the all the uh, sample networks. Then with this confident interval, they provide a regular upper bound with the square root the k uh, t. We are key the number of bandits, like the number of items we want to select it. So, and this Google upper bound is uh, depends on the number of round t. So it shows that the cumulative regret will grow some linearly with respect to number of rounds. And this uh, uh, regret bound depends on the number of bandits or number of items we need to select in combo. So, it means that if we want, if the combo has a very big size and the difficulty of this problem problem will grow linear. So empirically, they evaluated this proposed algorithm on the public data set, and then they designed the different reward function, final reward functions. The first uh, final reward function, each bandit will contribute equally to the final reward, but for the second. Uh, Final reward function, the bandits will contribute differently to the final reward. For example, the, uh, the first bandit will play the more important role in this final reward uh, formulation. So, in these two settings, Mufasa achieved the best, better performance in this uh, final reward function because Mufasa can select arms according to the different ways of bandits. In contrast, uh, this baseline will uh, treat each bandits or the each uh, item categories equally. They also uh, measure the performance based on the availability of the sub rewards. Uh, with one sub rewards, we find that still outperform all the baselines. Uh, without the any sub rewards, the Mufasa's performance uh, will be is getting worse, but it will be close to the best baseline. So this is the uh, uh, end of the session regarding the collaborative bandits. Uh, we talk about the, the clustering of bandits and the graph bandits learning to formulate the uh, coarse grain and the fine grain user correlations respectively. And in the end, uh, we talk about uh, the how to leverage the correlation among arm set and a specific algorithm for design for the combo recommendation. Next, let's uh, uh, quickly discuss the future trends. The first uh, direction is will be the explanation ability or the transparency of these uh, exploration actions. Because uh, in your bandits, they highly rely on the neural networks. And these many algorithms, they will use the gradient of a neural network. Because the neural networks are become more and more complicated, so they act like a black box. So, so how to explain on these uh, exploration actions in decision making is very important uh, to, especially for some Im important decision making process, we want to totally understand the and the reason behind each exploration action. Uh, the second direction will be the fairness, because the fairness has been, has been recently uh, increasing the, uh, attaching the more attention in terms of the sensitive attributes such as the gender and the race, especially in the recommendation scenario, how to uh, recommend fairly in terms of the user's uh, sensitive attributes. So there are many two challenges. The first challenge is how to uh, work on the non-ID data and how to balance between the exploration power and the fairness. The third direction will be the uh, Privacy of this uh, um, multi-arm bandits, especially we want, to, especially in the recommendation scenario, 
they want to make the good recommendation without uh, reviewing the user's uh, attributes. So how to like uh, make the exploration without accessing the user's uh, sensitive attributes of the information. So the one of possible future directions will be the federated multi arm bandits or the reinforcement lane. Since uh, uh, large, large models uh, is a very hard topic, and here I would like to bring a brief discussion regarding how to combine the uh, neural bandits with language, large language models. The first direction will be the prompting with the uh, explorations. Uh, because the prompts first uh, a question, they may, there are maybe many different prompts and the different prompts may lead to different performance. So therefore, how to select this uh, uh, prompts will be the dilemma of the exploration exploration. Because we want to explore these uh, uh, prompts that may have the uh, may lead to the better empirical performance. So we can leverage the principle uh, exploration strategy of the neural bandits to do the uh, prompt learning. And the second direction will be the uh, answering with the user-specific user specific exploration. It is well known that the, it is very difficult to fine tune the large long models for specific user. So therefore we can add the neural bandits to the large long models to learn the user-specific interest. So for the um, giving a question and giving a specific user, we want to make sure we can tackle the exploitation and exploration dilemma in this uh, answering or responding for these uh, uh, questions. And the third direction will be the fine tuning with the exploration. Because in the large language models, uh, it is the competitive, the cost of fine tuning is a very tremendous, is tremendous. So how to um, update the uh, models in each training iteration will be a, a good direction to explore because uh, in each training iteration we're only able to update the one component or the um one um uh, only subset of parameters. So therefore, we can use the neural based neural bandit based exploration to make the decision regarding which component we should uh, um we show the update in each training iterations. So this is the overall of this uh, uh, tutorial. We mainly cover three topics. The first topic will be the neural contextual bandits. We discuss the foundation of the neural contextual bandits, including the uh, series, uh, algorithms, and uh, the applications. And the second direction is the collaborative bandits. We discuss how to leverage the correlations uh, in real world and uh, design this algorithm with the uh, theoretical um, analysis and design with the theoretical performance guarantee and how to tackle the exploration and exploration dilemma in this uh, uh, in the recommended scenarios. And uh, the last part uh, we uh, discuss the few future directions regarding the neural bandits. So this is uh, the, all of this uh, tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, attention. And uh, if you have uh, any questions and uh, suggestions, comments, I will be very happy to hear and uh, uh, answer.